Human beings are designed for connection. We are designed to support one another. We are designed to receive from one another. We are designed to be in energetic exchange where it's a two way street, not just us always leading other people, us always taking responsibility for other people, us, you know, constantly thinking about and prioritizing everyone else's needs before ours. We need to be in relationships where that goes both ways. So you can do that through being in specific types of groups with a core value that you jive with. The groups that you're in don't need to have every single thing that you need, but they do need to have some of your core values. It's okay to have different groups so long as these different values of yours are being met. Really genuine experience of wanting to expand the self and also being willing to be an expander for one another and to see one another's potential and to hold each other to their vision. There's a belief that comes up that, oh, as I become more successful, as I evolve, as I become more visible or, you know, create more wealth for myself, I'm going to be disconnected from my family or I'm going to be different than my friends. And this is something that as a high achiever, you may have already dealt with, or it could be something, it could be a belief that is keeping you from your next level. Because at our core, human beings are communal beings. We are community oriented, desiring connection and not just any connection, not just superficial, like howdy neighbor, how's the weather type of connection, but, but being able to be our full self and not be judged for that and really be accepted for who we actually are, not for the mask or the facade that we put on. There's very few places where that's possible, but it is possible. There's so many reasons why this happens. Number one, as you are achieving more and creating greater levels of success, the kinds of conversations that interest you, that you are curious about, that you are focused on become things that maybe people you grew up with would look at you like you've got a fourth ear growing out of your head. Because once you start thinking about legacy and you start thinking about how am I going to leave something to my children? And what are the philanthropic organizations that I'm supporting? And how can I protect everything that I've built so that in two or three generations, we don't have a great grandchild who all of a sudden blows everything. We start thinking differently and it can be really isolating. It can feel like you're the only one. So if you are experiencing this, then likely you are maybe the most successful person in your group, at least perceived success. Because for you, you know that you are here for more. However, it can be hard to step into that and embody that when everyone around you is like looking at you in awe and they're like, oh my gosh, I would give anything to have your life. And oh my gosh, you should be content. Now, yes, we want to be grateful for the abundance that we experience and for the version of us that we chose to be, that we get to experience such beautiful reality. I do encourage you to find those environments. Environment is 80% of your success. If you've ever been in a room where everyone is negative, everyone's complaining, everyone's you know just thinking about what's going on with the latest presidential race and you're over here thinking about how to make more sustainable clothing the second barrier that i see happening is this busyness trap <laughs> high achievers mostly got there from hustle and this does not have to be the case if, if you grew up in an environment where you experienced lack or you perceived 
lack in your world and you felt like you would do anything to get out of that, the common narrative was you need to hustle and work hard in order to be successful. And so you wanted to run away from that experience. You didn't want to be poor anymore, or you didn't want to be struggling anymore. So you hustled. And this pattern continues no matter how much money you make until you address the belief or really even on a deeper level, address the identity of the hustler. If you don't address that, then what happens is no matter how much money you make, you don't create free time. And ultimately you just keep working. Everything is about work and you don't take the time. You don't make the time to really develop deep and meaningful lasting relationships. We're moving into an age of AI and technology is already created more disconnection, even though we can use Zoom and and text and and voice notes, which really do support us creating those deeper connections. But most of us are using technology as an excuse to be disconnected. So it takes consciousness, it takes intention to really prioritize those deep connections. The third way that that I see high achievers really perpetuate or continue this experience of loneliness is this numbing (laughs) through unhealthy habits. So keeping everything superficial, because there can be a fear sometimes. There can be a fear that as I'm successful, people are out to get me or people are jealous or envious of me and want to take from me. So there can be as a protective mechanism, oh, I'm going to protect myself from people. And we do that through disconnection, deep, meaningful relationships. They don't happen instantly. You can feel an instant spark with someone, but if you don't invest in that relationship or those relationships, if you aren't intentionally taking time out to continue to water those relationships, they will eventually just stay superficial and never go any deeper. The other thing too, that's really important is the idea of being in a safe space. And the truth is, is that the safe space has to be within you because we can never control other people, how they act, their intentions. We've got to bring this spiritual perspective and really understand that human beings are designed for connection. We are designed to support one another. We are designed to receive from one another. We are designed to be in energetic exchange where it's a two-way street, not just us always leading other people, us always taking responsibility for other people, us you know, constantly thinking about and prioritizing everyone else's needs before ours. We need to be in relationships where that goes both ways. So you can do that through being in specific types of groups with a core value that you jive with. Your groups, the groups that you're in don't need to have every single thing that you need, but they do need to have some of your core values. It's okay to have different groups. um, So long as these different values of yours are, are being met. Last thing to really note about this experience of loneliness is that emotion, that feeling, although it is painful, although it hurts, it is there as a blinking neon sign of, hey, this is where we need to grow. (laughs) This is what is going to get us to our next level. This is what's going to support us in embodying our higher self. We need to be in an environment that allows for us to explore ourselves, to come to know ourselves, to express the things that we're going through and also be met with others who are going to call us to our highest. I want you to take away from this that you're not alone in this. Even though we're talking about loneliness and you can feel alone, I want you to know that this is a shared struggle. Thank you again for spending a little bit of time 
diving into your euphoric evolution, and I will see you next time.